So this was actually just as cholesterol was a theory, but now you saw a slide that says LDL cholesterol causes atherosclerosis. We don't think it's a theory anymore. It took decades. The idea that inflammation causes atherosclerosis, heart attacks, and strokes was a theory that really has been promoted mainly in the last 20 years by this gentleman, a esteemed Harvard professor uh, who uh, was involved in developing a blood test you may know of called high sensitivity C-reactive protein. I like to tell little side stories. Harvard owns the patent for this blood test that I've probably drawn 15,000 times on patients, high sensitivity C-reactive protein. Your doctor could do it. It's in every lab. You can pay and get it drawn on yourself if you go to a lab like lifeextension.com and some of the others online, wellnessfx.com. But I understand that Dr. Ritker doesn't profit from the patent. It actually goes to support a dog rescue shelter in Boston. If you want a warm fuzzy in your heart, uh, I hope, I've read that, I hope it's true. I've met Dr. Ritker and we share almost the exact same birth date. But um, I didn't actually pin him down to say, is that actually true? That is such a nice story. So Dr. Ritker developed a, a study, this is like his life work, inflammation, heart disease, to ask the question, is it really true that this low-grade inflammation from your poor dental health, from your poor diet, from your excess weight, from your poor sleep, from your sedentary lifestyle, from your processed food and sugar-rich foods and um, trans fats, which have largely been eliminated from the diet, does this really, really work? Can we prove it? And although what I'm going to show you is the data from a study of 10,000 people that was accomplished and presented a couple years ago, it's still kind of a hot topic, the drug that was tested, this wasn't a let's eat green juice study, let's go to Hippocrates Health Institute study, it wasn't that, it was a drug, um, is not going to be available for this purpose, even though the study was quite powerful. So we know about inflammation in our hands. Uh, without boring you, if you look at the liver, which is in the middle at the bottom, you can see a little word there, CRP, uh, and all. The liver puts out this chemical you can measure in the blood, high sensitivity C-reactive protein. But Dr. Ritker knows this whole pathway, how do you get C-reactive protein elevated in your blood? And they found a drug that a little higher up in the pathway blocks the process, and by blocking the process, it lowers C-reactive protein. And they took 10,000 people to ask the question, is that gonna make a difference? in their heart attack rate if we lower the C-reactive protein. So the drug won't be coming out. It's several hundred thousand dollars a year. There were side effects of infection rates. But in the people that were on the drug, their C-reactive protein dropped and the risk, MACE is major adverse cardiac events. The risk of heart attack, stroke, need for bypass and such did go down. That's why there's, the lines here aren't the same. One line was placebo, the lower line was the treated group. You can see the name of the drug, I can't pronounce it, kinakinamib. Uh, but at any rate, this very expensive study proved the point. You should care about your inflammation, you should measure your inflammation, you should know your inflammation. It turns out, to give you great hope, that there is a diet-based study in heart patients that has been published uh, in 2018. The Evade Coronary Artery Disease Trial asked the question, you've got heart disease, you get put on a whole food plant diet for a year, you get put on a standard American Heart Association diet for the same period of time, can we lower your C-reactive protein? Now, a whole food plant-based diet doesn't cost hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It doesn't make you prone to sepsis and, uh, and such matters, and it's something we can embrace much more. Uh, I uh, exaggerated because it was an eight-week study, not a year study, but 100 patients uh, randomized in this way, and the same blood test was the endpoint as was in that Cantos high-profile study. People actually like their plant diets, 96% uh, compliance uh, at four weeks, 94%. They didn't send the food back. And when the results were published, you can see the American Heart Association diet on your right. The C-reactive protein before and after measured in the blood was about the same, but it did fall by 26%, uh, which is actually not that far from how much it fell in that other major trial. Of course, this is only eight weeks. We can't measure how many heart attacks, strokes, and bypasses in eight weeks in 100 people. It takes a study like the other one of 10,000 people over about four years to get those numbers. So 
you are eating an anti-inflammatory diet every time you eat a sweet potato and a leafy salad and uh, lupini beans or uh, white beans or whatever is your favorite lentil and such. So you can reduce inflammation to reduce your risk of avoiding disease. And the practical point I'd suggest to you, if you've never had your HS, high sensitivity, C-reactive protein measured, you could ask your primary care doctor to do it. It's a simple blood test, every lab does it. If you wanna do it outside the medical world, you can send away your blood to uh, places like wellnessfx, lifeextension.com. I think there's a place now called anylab.now uh, in various places. It's not expensive, but eat a lot of plants.